And we're back with some of the cast and crew of Orange Juice and Bishop's Garden. Billy Krishan and Liz Gadar, welcome to Picture Lock. Thank you Thank very you much. for having us. <laughs> yeah, so Liz, let's start with you. Um, you're the production designer. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about what you did for the series? Um, I basically invented sets. Uh, we usually, well, sometimes it was good. We would go location scouting. We'd find a perfect place outdoors or sometimes even a perfect place indoors. But after a while, that doesn't always happen. So often it was recreating what you wanted the viewer to think in a small space. Mm. It was lots of fun. Difficult <laughs> and really an adrenaline rush, but lots of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And I guess Otessa has you to thank for helping it to look so 90s. <laughs> yes. Now, that wasn't that long ago. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. All right, so, Billy, and you played uh, Brianna in the show. Yes. Can you tell us a little about your character? Um, well, Brianna was this uh, spunky force. Um, she crushed on somebody who she definitely couldn't have, um, and that was kind of a really fun dynamic because uh, somebody else crushed on her. It was this really mixed up thing. But I definitely think she was a bit of a wild one. <laughs> yeah. And so what did you uh, enjoy most about being a part of the web series? I definitely learned a lot, thanks to Otessa. Um, she taught me a lot about acting, about film, about what it takes to create a web series a lot about the dynamics of creating a space that you don't necessarily have. For example, the rave scene that there was in one of the seasons. <laughs> On the show, it looks massive, but um, it was a lot smaller. It was basically like one step up from a closet. <laughs> I mean, you would never know. <laughs> it was definitely it was a challenge for both production design, but also for acting. And it was like, OK, you guys, just pretend that this is a massive cavernous space. That's easy, right? Yeah. I think that's that's part of filmmaking, right? Like, you know, 90% is problem solving. So it's like, mm -hmm. how can you solve this problem to make it work? And then it comes out and it's like, it's awesome. So Otessa, in terms of, um, you know, coordinating schedules and then with the cast and crew, like how, what did you do or what's your, um, how do you approach, um, you know, production, scheduling and contacting everyone? Oh gosh, well, I would say that one thing that I learned really quickly, and actually this is sort of a throwback to what Billy was just saying about you know learning. The learning went all the way around. No one really knew what a web series, I mean, we still don't really know what exactly a web series is, like how it's inscribed. Right. Um, and part of, actually I ended up writing a textbook about the experience because I thought there was no, there was really no sort of DIY manual. Mm. Um, and I wanted to save people some of the, like, learning by mistakes that I did. Um, but I would say, in particular, that it, we all learned together, which was really kind of great. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the name of the book? Oh, it's called The Wild West of Film. Okay. And it's really the whole script to screen process. Is it available on Amazon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can know, You gotta Amazon. make the plugs, yeah, you know? Yeah, sorry, it's, it's available <laughs> on Amazon. Yeah, and it's actually, it's being used by, um, by American University in their curriculum, so. It's sort of nice to know. That is awesome. That, that actually, there are universities that are teaching web series now. Right. It's super cool. Right, definitely. So what? Are, what? I, this is a question for everyone. What is one of your fondest memories just being on set? Like, and, and specific to your, I either your character or, you know, as a production designer and as a creator. What's one of those fond memories that you have that you're just like, oh, I love this time. <laughs> Whoever has it first, go. <laughs> Maybe you can go first. <laughs> uh, Otessa gave me my very first makeout scene, uh, <laughs> and it was um, it was really interesting yeah. because there was it was kind of a budding thing between it was it was an interesting dynamic in real life as well, um, and I just remember her being like, "Okay, no, it's gonna be a bit awkward, but once you get in the flow of it, and um, I'm sure everybody knows film, you do tons of takes." <laughs> Uh, yeah. so it just takes and takes of making out. And <laughs> so thanks, Otessa, for helping me make out on film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I have a I have a bit of a funny story. Although I have to say that the rave scene was up there in terms yes. of. I mean, it looked amazing. Mm. Um, but yeah, when you know sort of the the story behind the scenes, right. you're like, really? That was that was something like. 
Yeah, working in a toaster oven comes to mind. <laughs> it was exactly. hot and small. It was really hot. Mm. Um, but I, I do also have some... Actually, I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I was hoping for a little extra time to go through them all, but I have lots. And I think what I really liked best in general um, is that even when suddenly things would go wrong, someone would be sick or something, especially for me, oh, gee, that prop, it was supposed to be here now. Yeah. Um, people relaxed and it actually all went well anyway. I was just thinking of the time that I forgot to bring the jar of the bottom of the liquor cabinets and suddenly at the last minute it had to materialize and the scene went beautifully even though five minutes before I was sure it was going to be a disaster yeah and yet everything coalesced everyone relaxed everyone put his best effort forward and I think that's really what I remember most is that everything magically well obviously it was not really magic right. A lot of it was due to Otessa, yeah. but um, everything seemed to coalesce, and yeah. it made for wonderful, wonderful memories. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So one of the things that I want to see is you know, like you, like we were talking about earlier, the web series um, is kind of its own magical beast that no one really knows where to put, and even in film festivals, it seems as though. No one really knows where to put a web series. So do you actually, like, because do you watch the whole series? Do you, what do you display? So it seems as though web series actually have to have their own festivals. So can you just talk a little bit and all of you maybe on your experience with um, festival runs um, and why maybe that is? Well, I completely agree with that statement, um, which is actually why I started the DC Web Fest, because I thought... Especially at the time, there was like you know a couple in LA, but nothing out here. And what I love about web series is that they don't need to be only in LA or New York, mm -hmm. you know. And we're seeing amazing content coming out of Missouri, wherever, you know. Um, so having a specialized festival that's really built for what a web series is is important. And I also remember like seven years ago when I was saying you know I was trying to do this thing and no one really knew what it was, and my teachers didn't really want me to do it. Um, what I remember also is that when we had content, you know, you're taught that you go. You do the festival run, and then that kind of springboards you to the next thing. But so many of these festivals were, you know, they were for short films, they were for feature films, and they had these sort of requirements where it had to be a premiere. Mm. Now, that doesn't help you if you can't put your web series out on the web because you're trying to make a festival run. <laughs> no, your web series needs to be on the web, <laughs> so you can't wait around for a yeah. premiere. I mean, it just, the, the markets didn't fit. So I think it's right. super important to have the market that does fit. Yeah. I think as well, the nature of a web series is different. Uh, motion pictures, the, everyone's thinking of a big screen. And with web series, it's much more intimate. Mm. So the feeling is different and what you put in, well, not that I make them, but what the, in, what the idea is, it's a very one-to-one -one relationship. And therefore, they, they don't seem to be in the same category to me. Um, if you want to go to a motion picture festival, yes, it has to be a big screen. And it's nice to see web series on big screens. Yeah. But most of the time, you're there with either your computer monitor or your phone. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit like looking at, well, the old photographs when they used to be small. It's very intimate. Yeah. And motion pictures can be, mm -hmm. but even when they go to do a close-up and that person's head is humongous, it's not quite the same thing. Yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, we got to wrap things up. But if you all could let people know where they can find you, uh, see not only the web series, but get in contact with you if you want to. Absolutely. So um, should I give my Sh website? and Whatever you okay. want to give. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so you can definitely check out the show, which has seven seasons, um, at ojinbg.com. And we also have our Twitter, which is OJ Bishop's Garden. Uh, and our YouTube channel is 2020 Productions DC. And you can check out the uh, DC Web Fest, which is going to be coming up Saturday, May 2nd. That website is dcwebfest.co, just co, not com. Okay. And you can look me up on Facebook at Billy Krishan. That's my actor page. And you can also find my jewelry website at Zid and Zealous on Etsy. 
Awesome. Well, Otessa, Billy, and Liz, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And congratulations you so on seven you. seasons. Yay. That's amazing. <laughs>